<coughs> okay, so let's continue from where we uh, left. Uh, so the endures of a propeller aircraft uh, can be calculated using this integral equation. Um, so your uh, the W0 is the weight of the aircraft with a full tank of fuel. W1 is the weight of the aircraft where the fuel tanks are empty. Uh, so during this flight, if you know the power produced by the engine, then you can uh, plot that at every instant and you should know the weight at every instant as well and the integral will give you the the endurance uh, so let's consider an aircraft taking off cruising for a certain amount of time and the aircraft then lands assume that the aircraft burns all its fuel during this flight so I'm talking about this black uh, data here so the vertical axis is the altitude the horizontal axis is the time, so this is very typical of a commercial flight, right? The aircraft takes off, comes to a cli uh, climbs a cruising altitude, and it does its cruising flight. And when it reaches its destination, it descends and then lands. Uh, so you need to know the power constant or the power generated throughout this entire flight. So, so this shows uh, roughly what the power will look like. So during the climb the engines will be producing uh, more thrust or more power and when it comes to the cruising flight uh, the power the created by the engine during cruising will be somewhat lower and it remains constant throughout the flight and when it reaches the destination during the descent phase uh, the power will be uh, reduced and then this is what the power may look like for such a flight condition okay uh, so if you have this data, then you can multiply this with the specific fuel consumption and then calculate uh, the area under, well, before that you need to uh, plot this as a function of the weight, weight of the aircraft. Uh, so the, here you see the, the power change, the power created by the engine as a function of time. Uh, you also know the, uh, the weight um, or you can calculate the weight throughout this time, right? Um, uh, so the the weight can be <coughs> uh, obtained as follows. So during the initial part, in the climb phase, the, the engine produces a constant amount of power. So if it does that, that means the weight must be consumed at a constant rate. Okay, so the, the weight will be reduced, so the, this is going to be a, a line, straight line with a constant flow. And during the climbing flight, again, the weight will continue to reduce uh, steadily, but the rate will be different, right? Since the, the engine power is now less, uh, the fuel consumption rate will be smaller, while you multiply with the same uh, specific fuel consumption number. Uh, so anyway, so this gives you the weight at every time, right? So the initially the weight was this much, and then when you come to this point, the weight is now this much. So you have the weight uh, change throughout the flight. So by combining this and this plot, from those two plots you can create um, change of uh, power as a function of weight of the aircraft. And then the integral will give you the, uh, the endurance amount of time spent in the air. Uh, so what is nice about this equation is your flight doesn't have to be composed of such steady uh, conditions, right? Such steady flight um, parts. Uh, so your aircraft may be doing all sorts of maneuvers throughout this flight. So if, for example, this red one is just some random... Uh, data for arbitrary flight. So the aircraft uh, consumes more power then the power is reduced here and then the power just oscillates like that for whatever reason. The engine power increases and decreases and increases and decreases. And uh, you can still calculate the endurance by using this integral equation. Okay? Um, Okay, um, uh, 
To calculate the range, uh, we do a very simple modification to this equation. So this is the equation, the fresh equation we use to calculate uh, the endurance. Uh, so what we do is we multiply both sides of the equation with the speed of the aircraft to find the range equation. Uh, so we multiply the left hand side with V, which is the speed of the flight, the right hand side as well. And on the left hand side now we have V times DT. And if you think about that, this gives you uh, the amount of distance covered with respect to ground within infinitesimal time dt. So you can write v times dt as ds. Okay, so this is the, the infinitesimal distance you cover on the ground within the infinitesimal time dt. Okay, uh, so now once you multiply the equation with v from both sides and integrate that, uh, the left hand side will give you this time range because you are doing the integration over ds starting from the initial point up to the point where you consume all your fuel. Uh, the the left-hand side will give you the, the range of the aircraft. And on the right-hand side, so this is the same integral as before, except that we now have this additional V term here. So without V, the integral gives you the endurance. And if you add V to that, uh, the integral gives you the range. Okay? And you do the same thing. To get rid of the negative sign here, you change the integration limits. And this is the equation you get in the end for the range of a propeller aircraft. Okay? And just like the nearest equation, this is valid for uh, all flight conditions. You can use this for any flight condition at any altitude, any speed. It's just that you need to use the... Uh, the instantaneous value of the engine power and the instantaneous value of the speed of the flight. And as you know, if you know them, you can uh, integrate them from the beginning of the flight to the end of the flight and the result will give you the range of your aircraft. Um, so here, the, these plots show you how you calculate range and endurance graphically. Uh, so if you want to calculate the endurance, you plot 1 over CP uh, as a function of weight. So normally, if you know this is a function of time, then you need to remember to make it plot as a function of weight and not time. Uh, if you calculate the area under this, you will find the endurance. To calculate the range, you need to multiply the, uh, this curve with weight. And if your weight is changing, then at every instant you will be multiplying with uh, the actual value of the, the velocity. So anyway, uh, this time if you calculate the area under that, uh, the result will give you the range of your aircraft. Okay, so yeah, you should keep in mind that these are not really the typical curves. So, it, it, so what this curve looks like totally depends on your flight uh, scenario. If you are uh, doing different maneuvers throughout the flight, then this curve will be changing. So there will be some random changes here. Uh, but the result is calculated. Uh, the, uh, <coughs> what you need to do is the same. You need to calculate the area under that. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, the simplified versions of that equation. So if I said that this is valid for uh, all flight conditions, but if you want to calculate it for a specific fuel, uh, flow, uh, flight condition like a steady level flight, then you can make and uh, make simplify this equation. And in fact, you can do the integration analytically, so you don't have to make a numerical integration for a steady level flight. So let's see how that can be done. <coughs> Okay, so, <coughs> so let's start with the propeller aircraft. Um, so we are now considering a propeller aircraft in steady level flight. Now we are making, starting to make assumptions in regards to the flight condition. So during a steady level flight, we know that the available power should be equal to the required power. Um, that's because the thrust should be equal to the drag force. 
And uh, if you come to this equation, the P here is the actual power produced by the engine. Okay? Um, but once you bring this assumption, once you say that you are doing a steady level flight, you can say that the actual power produced by the engine can be replaced by uh, the required power, which is equal to the drag force times the speed of the flight. Uh, so for a propeller aircraft, um, so this is the power um, the actual power produced by the engine and the uh, you cannot use all that power for uh, propelling the aircraft due to propeller efficiency so the uh, you need to include this propeller efficiency term here so the um, so, um, so I'm sorry this is the power produced by the engine so if your engine is running at a certain setting it produces this much power and multiply it with the propeller efficiency, the result is transmitted to flight. So this is the available power, which should be equal to the required power. Um, so this is the range calculation, right? So this was our integral equation. And remember, this P term is the actual power uh, of the engine. Um, so from here, you can write it as follows. Um, so this is the equality you should have for a steady level flight um, on the left hand side for available power you write power of the engine times the propeller efficiency ok and on the right hand side you have drag times the velocity so you throw the propeller efficiency to the right hand side and insert this power this uh, expression in in place of power here. Okay, so now this general integral equation turns into this one here. And again, the, the only thing we do here is instead of P, we write this expression. Okay? Uh, so on the numerator, we had a speed term here. But from here, we get another speed term, which is on the denominator. So these two V terms cancel each other. And you're left with this expression. Uh, so, at this point, we multiply the numerator and denominator by the weight. So, we multiply weight on both numerator and denominator. And uh, for the weight on the numerator, we use this equality. Instead of the weight here, we write lift uh, force. Uh, so, the weight on the denominator is left as it is. And we have this weight term coming from there. Uh, now we have this integral equation. Uh, we need to integrate this, right? Uh, so we make some additional assumptions here. We say that the propeller efficiency, the fuel consumption, specific fuel consumption, and the lift to drag ratio are all constant throughout the flight. So these are all very reasonable assumptions for cruising flight. So your aircraft reaches its cruising altitude and it keeps flying for several hours in the same condition and if these assumptions are correct then all of these terms can be taken outside the integral so this is what is done here so instead of lift to drag we can write CL to CD right because everything else uh, gets cancelled uh, so the integral is now becomes this simple integration so you're integrating 1 over W uh, with respect to dW and the, the that result gives you the natural logarithm of W0 divided by W1 now so this becomes the range expression for steady level flight with constant lift to drag ratio ok and this simplified equation is known as the Breger range equation for a propeller engine aircraft <coughs> Okay, uh, <coughs> now we can say that this is valid for entire uh, or for every flight condition. Obviously, this is only true for a steady level flight condition uh, performed at a constant altitude, at, at constant speed, and 
In that case, the range can be given by this expression. Now, by looking at this equation, you can uh, see what you need to do if you want to maximize the range. Uh, so, if you want the range to be maximum, so you want this equation to give you the highest possible result. Uh, so, these are the conditions for the maximum range. First, you need to fly at the point where this ratio is maximum. So, again, the aerodynamic efficiency is... Um, is important. The lift to drag ratio should be as high as possible. If it is, then your range will be maximum. Then you need to have the highest possible propeller efficiency, which is also very reasonable. If you have a very efficient propeller, that will uh, improve your range. You should have the lowest possible C value. Since C is on denominator, you want this to be small. And small means that you have an efficient engine, which is also very natural to expect. And the last thing, you need to have the highest possible ratio of W0 to W1. Uh, because if this is a big number, then uh, this will increase your range as well. And that means the ratio of big means that uh, you basically need to carry a lot of fuel, which is also very uh, natural to expect. So these are the things you can do to have an increased range. Um, so this can be considered in an uh, aircraft design problem. For example, suppose that you have a certain aircraft and you want to increase the range, which is what uh, aircraft companies do, right? For example, they design a new aircraft and then they increase the range of that aircraft. So this is what Boeing did, for example, it's all uh, types of aircraft. For example, you have Boeing uh, 777. Okay, so hopefully there will be a table that shows so these are different versions of this aircraft, right? So uh, probably this was the, the very first design. And then uh, a following design was named ER. And ER here uh, stands for extended range. So they designed an aircraft and then they modified the design so that its range is increased. It has an extended range. Uh, so if you go back to this equation, so obviously the, what's important here is the range in steady level flight because that's what these aircraft are designed to perform. Uh, they're performed to do long uh, cruising flights. Uh, so for this type of aircraft, you can directly use this simplified equation. So if, you, if they give you an aircraft and say that increase the range of this aircraft, so these are what you should look at. Uh, obviously, this is for propeller aircraft and not for jet aircraft. But uh, Well, as you can see, the best thing you can do is, the easiest thing you can do is increase the last work on the last item here, right? Um, it is really very difficult to change the lift to drag ratio of an existing design. If you try to do that, you will need to design a different wing and it will require a huge, significant change to the design. And the second thing is uh, the engine. Let's forget about the propeller. And the next thing is the fuel consumption of the aircraft. That means if you, you need to put more efficient engines, uh, but it is difficult to make a huge improvement there as well, right? Because you already have the most economical engine you could find at the beginning. So you can't improve that by a huge amount. Uh, engine companies improve their efficiencies, but the efficiencies they get are really very minimal. Uh, so if you want to incre increase the range a lot, the easiest thing is this last item you basically need to put a lot of fuel. And that's the easiest way to increase the range. Um, okay, um, so 
you can find, uh, you can uh, obtain a similarly a simplified expression for the endurance for the steady level flight condition, and the derivation is shown here. Uh, the difference is now we don't have a V term here. Okay, so in the range, there was a V here, and that V was cancelled by the other V here, but this time we don't get the cancellation. And since we are assuming a steady level flight, instead of this V term, we can use this uh, equation that comes from lift is equal to weight equation. Uh, so you have an additional weight term here within square roots on the denominator. So that is combined with this other W term. And now you have to integrate this expression here. Okay? And similarly, you can assume that these are all constants. Uh, since it's a level flight, the altitude doesn't change. This doesn't change. So this everything here can go out of the integral. And you integrate this part, which again, you can do analytically. It's a very easy integration. And this time, the, uh, the integral gives you this result. Okay? So in the range expression, you had a natural logarithm at the end, because the, you are integrating this part. But for endurance, this is what you uh, integrate. So instead of natural logarithm, you have now this expression. And this equation is called the Breguet endurance equation for propeller aircraft. So it says piston engine here, but it is better to say that uh, for propeller aircraft, where the thrust force comes from uh, propeller only. For propeller aircraft. Okay, now if you compare, if you look at this equation, it is similar to the, the range equation, but there are differences, obviously. Uh, well, the most important thing is that the condition, the aerodynamic condition, is different for endurance. So if you want to maximize range, you need to fly at the maximum lift-to-drag ratio condition. But if your goal is to increase endurance, then you need to fly at a different condition. Right? You need to fly at the condition where this ratio is maximum, not lift to drag ratio itself, but uh, Cl to the power 3 over 2 over Cd coefficient uh, ratio has to be <coughs> maximum. And the other things are the same. You still need uh, a low C value, a low specific fuel consumption value. You still need to have um, uh, the fuel amount of fuel on the aircraft as much as possible, as high as possible. And now there's also a second difference, which is that in the uh, the endurance equation you see the air density here. In the range we didn't have that. Uh, so for endurance you need to take air density into consideration as well. And in fact, if you want high endurance, then the rho has to be as high as possible, and the highest rho value is obtained at sea level, right? So for maximum, for best endurance, you need to fly at uh, at sea level, basically, for the raw value to be maximum. So there are two differences for maximizing range and endurance. If your goal is uh, to maximize range, you need to maximize CL to CD ratio, and the air density is not important. So for range, you can fly at any altitude you want, and range doesn't change for steady level flight only. Um, but if you want to maximize endurance, then air density becomes important, and you should fly at the uh, sea level or at the lowest possible altitude for maximum endurance. Okay. Uh, well, for jet aircraft, the uh, things are very similar. Uh, so I don't uh, want to talk about jet aircraft yet. Um, and it, there's nothing different there. You just start from the equation well for jet aircraft and do the, the similar things, okay? Um, <clears throat> but let me talk about something 
Um, else, let me see if I can. Okay, so I said that um, the easiest way to increase the range is to increase the amount of fuel because the, the other things are not that easy to change and it's very difficult to make significant improvements through the other terms. And um, uh, well, you can start with a very um, high, large amount of fuel on the aircraft, but that will, that's not that easy as well. So if you want to increase the range without making significant changes to the aircraft, uh, the best way is to refuel the aircraft while flying. Uh, so you cannot take an, a an existing aircraft and increase the fuel tank capacity by a factor of five, for example. You can't do that, right? You can't add that big of a fuel tank without changing the design of the aircraft. Uh, so especially for military aircraft, it's very common to refuel the aircraft while flying. Um, so let's say you have a fighter aircraft and that has a certain amount of range. That means if this is the base and you can use that aircraft within a certain circle, right? And this is the area where you can use that aircraft for military operations. And if you want to be able to use that aircraft at places that are farther away, then you need to uh, refuel the aircraft during the flight. Um, so let me show you some ways of doing that. Uh, let's take a look at these videos. Şurada link başka bir yere gidiyor ya onu arıyor o yüzden videoyu hemen açamadı şimdi. Bunu keşke öyle yapmasaydım da. Şurada orijinal. So as you see here, they don't only refuel small fighter jets, even such large aircraft can be refueled if they are equipped with proper uh, systems. So there are two different ways of refueling an aircraft in the air. One is to use such a boom. So there is a rigid boom here and this is controlled by this aircraft here. The, uh, the position and the orientation of the boom is controlled here. So there are small wing sections here. You see these wings are used to control this boom. So aerodynamically, just like controlling an aircraft, uh, there's an operator there 
and he uses the, these uh, wings to control the position of the boom. Let me see, there must be an... Um, Okay, so I think this is a better view. Uh, so there's a person sitting here, and that person controls the boom, and the aircraft just comes close to the uh, tanker aircraft, and the operator here controls the boom to find uh, of this hole here. Okay, so after the refueling, the, this aircraft has a full tank of fuel again, so it can keep flying for, uh, it can fly more, basically. Um, the second way is to use a basket probe and stroke. Uh, so what's different here is, in the first, in the previous one, uh, the tanker aircraft was responsible for making the connection. But in the second one, uh, this other aircraft, the follower aircraft, has to find the correct position for refueling. Uh, because the, the tanker aircraft doesn't have a controllable boom. Okay, so uh, the tanker aircraft cannot control the position of this basket here. So there's a basket here. And the following aircraft has to fly into the correct position. Uh, well, this approach is more difficult for the, the following pilot because he needs to fly very precisely into the position. And the advantage is the tank aircraft can fuel two aircraft at the same time. You see there's one uh, here and there's another hose here. So this aircraft can refuel two aircraft at the same time. So that is the advantage. <coughs> so the purpose of this basket here at the end of the hose is uh, well it may have more than one purpose but one of the most import important reasons why they have it there is to make the, the hose stable okay so due to the having this basket here that hose can stay uh, can be extended steadily. You see, it, it just stays almost constant in the air, so it's easier for the receiving aircraft to catch that. And in this next video, it shows how not to refuel. You see the importance of that basket. So this is again uses the ba basket, and the aircraft is trying to catch that. So it's not really that easy to really find the, the hole. Uh, if you notice that the basket breaks during that incident, so it tries to catch it, but now uh, after that, uh, yeah, at this point the basket breaks, and once the basket is gone, you see the hose is not cannot stay that steadily anymore. So it's obviously also there's fuel uh, being ejected. Uh, So anyway, um, so that way you can extend range of an endurance of aircraft if you can if you have that cap uh, capability. 
Okay? Do you have any questions? Uh, so, the, I showed you range and then use equations for propeller aircraft. Now, they are slightly different for jet aircraft and I'm going to talk about them on Friday. So, I don't want to keep you any longer here. Uh, if you don't have any questions, then I'm going to stop here. And on Friday, I will talk about the corresponding equations for jet aircraft. It, there's really nothing new there. Um, the, the procedure is the same. Uh, so, anyways, uh, thanks for coming and I will see you next Friday.